disappeared or dead. Richard, please make contact. Love mum, dad and Rachel. Read an advertisement in a newspaper in 1995 for a man who left everything behind, plagued by the demons in his mind. On February 1st, the 27-year-old latest heartthrob of the UK checked out of his hotel room in London. This story of Richie Edwards is decades old, yet still alive in the hearts of many who saw him reach the greatest heights of fame and disappear out of nowhere. On the Severn Bridge, infamous as the s spot, Richie's Vauxhall Cavalier received a parking ticket. Later, police found out that the car had been abandoned for days. Batteries in the car were dead, and it seemed to be in lift-in. The owner of the car was nowhere to be seen. The sudden disappearance of Richie Edwards created panic. Did he take his own life? Did Richie plan his disappearance? Why did he leave? So many years passed and nobody knows the answers. Richie Edwards, the heart of Manic's band, the injured soul of rock music. Many people who knew him claimed Edwards can never think of taking his own life. By quoting his own words that he said he's strong enough to never attempt the act, his family hoped to see him one day knocking on the door of his house and cheerfully exclaiming the words, I'm home. Their wish, however, would never come true. Richard was born in Blackwood, Kea Philly, in Wales. After receiving a degree in political history from the University of Wales, Edwards became a roadie and a driver for the Manic Street Preachers. Soon, the three band members would accept him as the fourth guitarist and the main member of their band. Shortly, this fourth member would become a mastermind of their lyrics, but an outsider in his own band. Richie never fancied himself a musician, rarely took part in recordings and didn't like to be the center of attention. Even when performing in front of a huge audience, he would dial down his amp to let the other band members shine. However, Edward's shy persona and glamorous features would gain him tremendous yet unwanted fame and attention. His striking, almost unsettling glamour caught the attention of his fans. Even though Edwards preferred to be low-key, his aura, charm and striking features were enough to let him shine. Staying in the background proved to be of no help. The three members of the Manics combined would not get as much attention as Edwards would which proved to be deathly for him. The band members were happy with the attention Edwards brought them. Little did they know, the fourth member would cause a scene that would make headlines throughout the UK. In 1991, Edwards got into an argument with a journalist who challenged the originality of the Mannix. As a direct reply to the journalist, Edwards carved the words for real on his forearm with a razor blade that required 18 stitches for recovery. After the incident spread like wildfire, the whole UK would find out Richie's history of self-harming, mainly through stubbing cigarette butts out on his arms and sometimes cutting himself. Not only did he self-harm, but Edwards also suffered from severe depression, which he chose to not hide from the world. In several interviews with the press, Edwards talked about how he dresses up whenever he's depressed. When I was young, I just wanted to be noticed. Nothing could excite me except attention, so I'd dress up as much as I could. Despite giving hope to his fans who suffered from the same miseries, Edwards couldn't help but have severe anxiety and phases of extreme sadness. Right after the release of Manic Street Preachers, named The Holy Bible, Edwards checked himself into a psychiatric hospital, leaving other members to perform on their own for big events and festivals. The Holy Bible would become the last album that would be released with the presence of Richie. His final live appearance, however, would be with his other band members at a concert at London Astoria at the end of the year in 1994. The band members smashed their guitars on stage, which was a tradition introduced by Edward himself whenever he finished the song You Love Us. On February 1st, 1995, Edwards was all set to fly to America for a promotional tour with his band member James Dean. Little did the world know he was planning to depart from their sight, either to disappear or die. Two weeks before vanishing from the face of this planet, Edwards withdrew a £2,800 check from his bank. This transaction would later give birth to several conspiracy theories claiming that Edwards planned his disappearance before his tour to the US. Richie checked out of the Embassy Hotel, called a taxi and drove off to Blackwood, his hometown. The taxi then dropped him off at Seven View Service Station. Edwards was 27 at the time and the heart and soul of Manic Street disappeared in thin air right after he arrived at the Severn View. His car was found abandoned at the Severn Bridge because the place is known to be a <laughs> spot. Many assumed Edwards has jumped from the bridge. His abandoned car showed signs that Edwards had lived in it before disappearing. Edwards' family, however, refused to admit that he had taken such a step. They could not believe their son had given up on life. Perhaps in the year 2008, it shouldn't have been a surprise when the court order came, ruling that Richie Edwards be presumed dead. 
Even though several sightings of the guitarist were reported to the police, every time they followed a trace, it would only lead them to a dead and culture, alienation, boredom, and despair. These four words became the philosophy of the manic street preachers when Edwards joined the band. Before disappearing in 1995, Edwards was the shining star of the band, crafting meaningful lyrics that showcased his misery and trauma as a direct result of capitalism. He was skilled in mixing his own feelings with the struggles of people affected by the system. Edwards was also very open about his emotions and struggles with mental health, anorexia, and alcoholism. His lyrics soon became an attraction for people who dealt with the same torture. Ritchie was the main songwriter of his last album, The Holy Bible. The lyrics of the songs in this album skillfully intertwine how capitalism and imperialism impact both the world and our personal lives. He links global justice with mental health problems and so many people emotionally resonated with his intelligent approach toward life. Emphasizing his message to the world, Ritchie would tell his fans about the pointlessness of capitalistic productivity culture. He was the biggest critic of the culture and once said, the majority of your time is spent doing something you hate to get something you don't need. His sentiments were always negative towards the hustle culture. Edward's emotional intelligence would not be appreciated before his death, yet he continued to speak about the brutality of the system that was affecting his mental health. Edwards was an alcoholic. In his episodes of extreme sadness, he would drink too much, which eventually led him to rehab. After coming out of this phase, Edwards seemed to isolate himself from his band members, no longer hanging out after rehearsals, and always staying quiet. In one of his last interviews, Edwards told the journalist that he is doomed to be lonely. He described himself as unlovable and later explained why, becoming very vulnerable to the world. Edwards told the journalist that he has never had a loving relationship. Although he is seeing a girl who he really likes, he feels trapped. He feels comfortable around that girl, yet he cannot confess his emotions to her because he knows that this relationship would end sooner or later, holding himself responsible for his unlovable nature. Edward agreed that his thoughts are the only obstacle in his way to a happy life. The audience of the Mannix would witness Edwards hurting himself during or after the concerts. During a show in Thailand, Richie began cutting himself across the chest, frightening the people concerned for him. This event happened before he checked himself into the psychiatric hospital. Despite clearly noticing Richie's decline in mental health, his fans would come up to him, gifting him ceremonial knives and asking him to cut himself with their gifts. Richie would admit that things were fine when he was 13. He would come back from school, play football and lie in the embrace of his grandmother. Just when he started high school, everything went downhill. He was separated from his loving childhood and caring nana. He found the world cruel and ruthless, not knowing how to survive through it. Some fans of the band after his death would call him too fragile for the world. Richard was allegedly spotted in Goa, India. Some say that Richie was working as a waiter in a restaurant in Goa. They identified him by the tattoo on his arm. However, this claim remained a theory. Some people believe that he flew to Thailand where he died in the Boxing Day tsunami. Maybe he intended to come back but life had other plans for him. Soon after his disappearance in 1995, a taxi driver claimed to have given Richie a ride to the Severn Bridge. In the coming years, several people would come out claiming to have seen Richie. In 1996, a year after Richie's disappearance, a bartender in Canary Island reported having served Richie a drink. He told the news reporter that the man had the same sharp features as Richie, however, the claim was never investigated. Later in 1998, Edwards was spotted in Goa, but no investigations were carried out to find him. In 2001, an old woman saw Richie in a local supermarket with a girl who appeared to be his love interest. She said that Edwards looked tall and skinny and his eyes showed deep sadness. Once again, there was chaos in the media. Fans began to write their own theories on the internet. However, the police found a dead end once again. All of these alleged sightings were proved to be false and none had been confirmed by the investigators. Many would agree that the greatest guitarist and lyricist in the history of rock music had jumped from the bridge that night on February 1st at 2.55 a.m. His friends would later observe a pattern in Richie's behavior before disappearing from their lives. He was probably saying his last goodbyes, gifting them books and letters saying, I love you. No one noticed that Richie was planning to walk away from everything he created for himself. 